Alrighty guys, back here again today on my map of Viraktir, and I'm going to be showing you guys just a little, kind of not really tutorial, just explaining exactly how this add-on to the wave system is going to work for you guys. So I'll hop back into first person here, and so you've probably seen this in the giant playthrough, oh not playthrough, but the wave system kind of 2.0 as I called it. So, instead of having a button that usually goes into here, so normally on the old system, people push button, starts the next wave, but problems with that doesn't feel very authentic to Call of Duty, and when people, they can just wait between rounds, and in normal Call of Duty, you know, the waves start right after all the zombies are dead. So I've looked into it, and for the giant map, I want to make it better, so I built this system, and honestly, it's pretty darn simple. So start, this is the very heart of the system, is right here. So this command block doesn't really matter because I have a uh, scoreboard set up here and all that scoreboard does is show how many zombies are left but that's kind of besides the point. If you want to do that you can look up how to make a scoreboard. There's plenty of tutorials online to make a scoreboard and then this one simply runs this command. You can check here. So it's going to execute the command, it's going to store the result and then the score of all players can update and then this is my scoreboard. I have it called zombies. And this scoreboard is going to update the top bar here to show how many zombies are left. So that one is completely optional for this, and um, that's all I'm going to talk about that for. So the heart of the system here, this is how you can pause the game. So I added this as your timer and system that keeps ticking. So on this one, right here is have whatever item you want inside of this hopper feeding into this hopper. And if there's no redstone signal here, it's going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth which will tick this on and off, on and off, which will hit this. And this is the command that you need to have on your map. So, execute at, and then at A again, so all players, unless there's an entity with type of zombie. If there's no zombies off the map, it's going to run a set block command. And I have the set block command as a redstone block. So, I have that set, so once there's no zombies off the map, Right now the map's paused again, remember? So once they start the game, it's going to delete this redstone block. This is just the pause block. This block breaks, and then this is going to allow this to start ticking back and forth between these two hoppers. It's going to go into here, tick this, and as soon as this one command block sees that there's no more zombies in the map, it's going to spawn a redstone block right here. And this is going to come through here, send the signal. This will say next wave in 30 seconds. And this breaks the signal after about, ah, oh, what's that? four redstones on four ticks going through here it'll break it and then this is just a simple redstone thing that has 30 seconds so it'll last for 30 seconds wait so the pulse will be coming through here through here around all the way around here and then that'll start the next wave and now to make sure it doesn't keep spawning waves back to back to back while it's waiting for zombies to spawn you have to add sort of battery backup system and i'll show this how it works all after and all this is going to do is that, so it's going to hold the system on pause after the round ends. And then this is going to delete that redstone block again, which will make this start testing for zombies again. So I'm going to show you this just right here. So I'm going to get up some zombies. Okay, so I'll show you how this all works here. So once someone spawns into the map, I'm just going to break this, you don't need to see that. So when someone spawns into the map, it's going to automatically delete this block. And when someone dies in the map, and they have to reset the map, it's going to pause the game right here. So this is what pauses the game. And to show you that, so someone spawns in, boom, the map, now it's going to start testing for zombies. Spawns the block here because there's no zombies. And it starts this timer. And so now I'm going to place some zombies down here in a second. But once this timer is all done, it's going to give you my items that I get every round. And my, uh, so my food, my grenades, and it's going to also start this battery up. This battery lasts about 15 seconds. And so right now this is paused. This is pausing the system. So now it's not testing for zombies. So if it started testing for zombies right away, then it would just keep spawning in new rounds and new rounds. So this block's going to stay here pausing it until this dies out. So now you'll see that the zombies are all spawning in. So now... Once the zombies are all spawned in, it's going to start testing again for zombies. So if there's zombies in the map, which I'll place them down here, 
you'll see that now when this is gone, it's going to get rid of that block, which means now even when it's testing for zombies, see, 14 zombies left. It's not going to start a new wave. And if you can spawn in more zombies, you'll see it keeps updating that scoreboard as well. Now the scoreboard's up to 22, 19, 15, and as soon as it drops down to zero, you're going to see that block it spawned in. So right now, it's testing, testing, testing every, like, say, half second. It'll test about two times a second. Now once all these zombies die off, in a second, you'll see. Boom. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Once you have this base system set up here, make sure you have a pause block, and then once the game starts, it gets rid of that block. This will spawn in this block here, which will send the pulse through, and then make sure you have that buffer. So you have this little buffer built in, so once zombies are spawned back in, then it starts testing. And I think this should be a pretty good idea of what to do, just plug it in again directly to where the button normally goes, and that'll activate your wave system for the next rounds. Round 18. Also, for adding the round system like that, so let me just pause this for a sec. Now it's all paused, and I have had some mixed noises every time too now. But these command blocks on top are what show you those titles. So right where they come up, the pistons and meet, you can put your rounds there. So as soon as it comes up like this, you'll see it starts the new title. So these are all just title blocks uh, set to red. And that's what they look like. And if you do this, honestly, you should be able to have the exact same wave system that I had in the Giant. And simply the reset button down there just like always. And I hope this is a decent tutorial-ish explanation on how this all works. Let me know if you guys can make it work or whatnot. And thanks again for watching. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers couple more till we get there and hopefully we can keep growing from there. Thanks as always. See you guys next time.